again and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is something I haven't done in a long time. I can't even remember the last time I did a speed build, but this speed build has been built for months. I probably, I can't remember when I built it, but I'd probably say as far back as the summer last year. So this is M in the A to Z build series, something which I haven't done for a while, uh, which you probably have noticed if you like to watch my videos on my channel. So we are building a museum for M. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about before we get into the actual build. So while you're watching me uh, do the exterior of the build, which was surprisingly easy to get right <laughs> as I wanted it, which I like, I don't know, that never happens. I mean, if you're like me, I have to build at least three different lots before I settle on the, the last one and then I'm like, oh yeah, that one will do. Anyway, back to what I was going to say. So I just wanted to talk a bit about the changes that have happened on my channel. So one of the biggest changes, obviously you might have noticed, is that I've gone from being green screen YT to MG YT. Now the reason behind this name change is uh, purely because I was worried that people were expecting a certain thing from my channel, which is green screens. And for people to come onto my channel thinking that I was going to be doing some amazing things with green screens and that they were going to be part of my channel. but. The thing is, where my actual workspace is in the living room, when I tried a green screen with it and I thought, you know, that'd be perfect, I can do that, I can use a green screen, whatever, um, it actually doesn't work in the area that I that I am in and, and I can't afford to go and buy an office or whatever or go anywhere to actually be able to use one. So that's not something that I'm going to be able to do for a long time um, until I have a proper office space that I can do this in. So I wanted to change my name so that it kind of encompassed everything that I like to do on my channel, which it's not going to be just purely sim stuff. I know that for since I started my channel in February that um, you will mainly see sims things on my channel, but that's because sims is a game that I know inside now it's a game that I've been playing since it first came out since I was 11 years old and I just knew it inside out and I'd watched a lot of sims youtubers so it seemed like a pretty easy thing to start with now obviously it's been a year almost um, and I kind of wanted to take the first year of doing YouTube as a bit of a training year so get used to the software that I was using because I had to learn all the software from scratch. I had no idea how to edit a video, I had no idea how to edit a thumbnail, I had no idea how to do a lot of things <laughs> with Photoshop, with everything. Um, I've been lucky enough that I'm able to use Photoshop and Premiere Pro, so I had to learn how to use these programs, so I wanted to take a bit of a training year. I wanted to do content that I enjoyed making uh, in a game that I knew that I could play quite easily. So The Sims was the, the one that I wanted to play in, and it's a game that I will play for years to come, and I will probably buy everything that EA ever brings out because for The Sims, because, you know, I'm, I'm a... I don't know, just because I will. <laughs> so anyway, kind of getting off topic, but basically what I'm trying to say is that the last year I wanted to take as getting used to YouTube and uploading and putting things on the internet and the kind of things that you have to do and how much time it was going to take me as well because I work 40 hours a week and I know that a lot of people that do YouTube also work and I'm not lucky enough to be able to do this as my full-time job so this is purely a hobby for me and I have to do it in my spare time which is after work and weekends and I mean we all know that sometimes at the weekends you have other things that you want to do like it, you know I can't, sometimes I just cannot give the time to actually put into YouTube so I wanted to know how long it was going to take me and the best way to get around it so I think I've come up with a plan which is that I'm going to be batch recording um, my episodes of everything that I'm doing legacy episodes other games that I'll be playing and I'm gonna batch do them and upload like a couple of weeks at a time so that it's a bit easier for me to manage them and obviously I can do other things like I do like there is a discord group that you can find in the uh, description of this video and you can come and join that I am actually a moderator for that but I haven't been able to put too much time into it at the moment purely because YouTube and work and life take up so much time in my life so I want to give myself more free time and that's the best way to do it. Now I feel like I've got a good grasp of um, 
YouTube and how to go about it. Um, I am actually going to be taking a step back from Twitch. I'm going to be taking a step back from quite a lot of things that I sort of took on um, and just sort of overwhelmed myself with. Um, and I'm just going to strip it back right to the core ones that I want to do, which is going to be focusing on YouTube, uh, obviously content, uh, legacy challenges, the challenges, the weird, the weird test challenges that I was doing that I was enjoying before I went on my hiatus over Christmas. And obviously the rebrand, the rebrand has been the most important thing. So my name is Emma Green and people call me Emma G. So M-G-Y-T makes sense for me more than green screen Y-T. So basically that is uh, what I wanted to kind of fill you in on and just wanted you to know why there have been a lot of changes or perhaps why I've been a little bit quiet. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to talk to me, you can find me on Twitter at MGYT. I will always try and answer back as many people as I can and stuff like that. So thank you very much anyway, if you have subscribed to the channel and you are still with me after all this time of indecisiveness. Hopefully now we can get back on track and I can actually move forward with my channel. Now I know that what I'm doing kind of thing. So it's uh, hopefully going to be a good steady ride from here. So yes, I have actually pre-recorded pre two weeks with of episodes as well for um the legacy challenge for youtube and um which is the collector's legacy we're currently at university of titus i've actually pre-recorded two weeks worth of stardew valley i've done some throwback thursday stuff in the sims 3 and i'm going to be doing some planet zoo uh, recordings as well this week so i feel actually on top of things and i feel like everything's kind of going the way that i want it to go so anyway enough of that let's talk about this build so this is the museum and it actually ties into the legacy challenge uh, because this is the museum where my legacy people as whatever you want to call them are going to be collecting stuff to put in this museum so basically the idea is that they own this museum this is their museum and it's got all the the toilet awards i don't know what they are it's got skull no bronze silver gold and more gold <laughs> um toilet awards this museum has but anyway they own this museum and um, it has a little cafe attached to it and a little gift shop and each section of the museum is going to be uh, sort of uh, catered to each uh, generation of the legacy. So the first section is was all about gardening. If you haven't watched um, season one, then go back and watch season one. I will put a card up in the corner where my um, founding sim of the legacy collected all of the gardening items uh, for, from the base game. And um, she is, uh, um, she's gonna put them in here. And then she's had Titus, who is the second generation um, Air? I can never say that word. Air. Anyway, um, and he's going to university to be a univer um a university. He's going to university <laughs> to become a university. No, he's going to be an astronaut, and he's going to be collecting the space rocks, the geodes, and the space aliens. You know, in the little jars that you can get. So as you walk around this museum. Um, you will go through this door and you will come into like a greenhouse style area where you will get all the, um, where there will be all of the plants um, and everything that, that my first generation collected and then you will walk through into there is actually an area for experimental photos but when I was playing with her um, the experimental food photos were actually bugged out so I haven't cl completed those yeah but there is an area for that and i will go back and do that at some point and then there is going to be the area for the space stuff so he's going to have all the spacey things and then you go upstairs and there's going to be areas for i can't remember what the rest of the the collections are or what how what order i've put everything in but basically you're going to kind of walk around this museum it's going to be a bit like an ikea where there's like one um like pathway around and then you get to the end and kind of exit through the gift shop I guess is is the term used so um yeah so as you can see I've put a number two there that's uh, generation two I think I did do 10 generations in total so hopefully there is enough space but I think it is a three-story building so there should be plenty of space for everything but if not I could always expand it that's not a big deal I have only done the bottom floor in this speed build and the rest of it is just kind of ready for um us to uh, update it as we go along um 
I didn't want to do all of it, mainly because it got to this point and it was already an hour and a half long, the video, and I was like, it's going to take forever to do the rest of it. So I think I'll probably do it um, as and when it's needed for the legacy challenge. So yes, yeah, so this is like the little garden and then there's like this kind of extra garden bit where I was gonna put like the more expensive plants um, that, as if they were like kind of behind a closed door and a bit more guarded. So you can kind of walk in. There are walkways that people can obviously walk in. Um, I have set this as a retail lot, but I'm thinking perhaps I might change it to a restaurant or cafe lot. Um, just that one thing I want to talk about actually would be how great would it be if we could have multiple purpose buildings in The Sims 4? I'm not sure if this is something that we've ever had in The Sims, I can't remember. I don't think it is, but I would love to be able to choose two types of lot. So say for instance, you could have a retail lot plus a residential lot. So you could maybe build a store with like an apartment above it. Or if you could have a cafe slash retail lot, so you could do like a, a proper mall with um, like loads of shops. And obviously you can have like the, the food court or whatever, or, you know, maybe have like a park, but um, I'm trying to think what else lot types you can have. Um, maybe like a rental lot. So you could have like a really nice, like kind of national park, but an area at the back of it where there's perhaps a hotel or something or a B&B &B where people can go and stay. I would absolutely love like multi-purpose lots just because I love building commercial lots. I like building um, lots that um, are going to get a lot of Sims to be there and just kind of have different purposes. Obviously, if I set this as a museum, then the gift shop and the cafe would be obsolete. Um, I mean, I know I can hire a vendor to come and stand behind um, like the cafe area or whatever, but that's a bit tedious and a bit annoying. So instead of setting it as a museum, I've decided to set it as a retail lot, but now I'm perhaps thinking I'll change that. But um, yeah, it's just kind of, that's one thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is that I feel like there's so much stuff we can do in this game uh, but there's always that one tiny tiny little thing that's missing that i wish we could do i mean one of my absolute favorite expansion packs for the sims will always be open for business like that was just an absolutely fantastic pack like so good i remember playing that pack to death i loved that pack so much i even had the little prima um guide you know do you remember when you used to be able to buy those with the sims games i used to have that and i used to read it religiously um before i started playing the game um yeah so basically i wanted to kind of have this like open for business style also one thing that i wish that we had that we don't is like a ticket machine because that could have worked i could have had like um I could have had a ticket machine in the reception area. You saw that I did that like little reception area with the ropes and stuff where you you would perhaps buy tickets. It'd be good to have a ticket machine there that people would pay to come into the museum, but then also set it as a cafe. So they'd have to pay to come in, but also they'd like, get, I don't know, maybe just go and have a um, something to eat. But um, so I don't know. I'm just going to have to kind of, I might play test it. I might sort of see which one works better. Uh, whether it's the cafe or whether it's the actual um, uh, the retail lot that works better because I've got a feeling that the sims are just going to hot like hot foot it straight to that area and then the rest of it's just going to be empty which is going to be a bit annoying I guess but I can't really do much about that obviously if it was a museum the sims kind of go and look at all the stuff that's in there but um yeah so anyway so this is the space area so i've kind of got like these little areas roped off um imagine like sort of imagining that these are the things that titus used to find his space rocks and obviously he's got that um toxic waste there which is very safe i promise you obviously we've got all these little plaques sort of explaining what each thing is and and um obviously you know this is the area for the uh, experimental food photos which eventually i will collect with adeline um that's the first the founder sim is called adeline the second sim is called titus he hasn't yet had any children so we don't know who um will be following on from him but I can't remember what I did for the third for the third uh, generation um but basically um the idea behind the collector's legacy anyway was to kind of get me doing things in the game that I don't perhaps do which is the collections I don't collect the stuff from the game but also not only that just to kind of uh, um do 
do other things in the game that I don't do. So like uh, things that I've never done. So part of it is to go to like and do all the jungle adventure stuff. I've never done the jungle adventure stuff. Um, another part of it is to be a detective. I've never done the detective career. I've done the science career and I've done the uh, the doctor career, but never did the detective one. So there's like all these different kind of things, elements um, of The Sims 4 that I've not played with. And also it adds a little bit of challenge because as we all know, it can get a little bit boring playing The Sims. Um, so the way that I stop myself from getting bored is to add in little challenges. So this legacy challenge is mine. It's very, very kind of similar setup, I guess, to the Not So Berry challenge, except that um, you have to collect, obviously, um, part of it is to, to do all the collections that come in. Um, but yeah, I kind of based it a little bit off that where each generation has like a set of rules that they follow to um to kind of progress so like for instance titus can't progress with the second generation until he collects those three things and also i think there was uh, there is an optional kind of he can have a space baby or whatever um an alien baby and I think Adeline had to become a celebrity chef and um, also grow a cow plant. And that was her two things that she had to do and obviously collect all of the uh, the flowers um, and the vegetables um, up to base game. I was going to do all the packs, but it got too long and I was getting too bored with just having to grind out these uh, plants. So I've just done base game because they're pretty easy to find and they, that was over quite quickly. Um, we could move on to the next generation. So yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I'm quite um I'm quite pleased with uh, with how the legacy has, has turned out. Um the rules to it are on my Tumblr, which will be in the description down below. So if you do fancy the challenge yourself and want to do something a little bit different, then um yeah, go ahead by me by all means try it for yourself. And also if you want to send screenshots or you wanna let me know how your families are getting on with it, you can also do that on Twitter or if you do uh, if you do, do any sort of YouTube creation videos on, on it, then obviously tag me in them and stuff so I can watch them myself. But yeah, I've been having quite a lot of fun with it recently and um, um, it's my first legacy challenge that I have ever done and also my first challenge that I have ever created in The Sims um, along with like this challenge which is the A to Z build challenge this is this is like challengeception this is a challenge within a challenge so there you go if you like your challenges um, you've got more than more than one there so yeah so like I say this is M in the A to Z build challenge and the next one is obviously N, M, N, yeah, I had to do my alphabet a little bit then. Um, and I asked people to vote for what they wanted me to do for N and people voted for a nursery and they also voted for it to be an old fashioned style nursery. So that is what we are going to do in the next A to Z build challenge. Now I don't know how regular they will be because speed builds are a lot harder to make um, they just require a lot more time. I will try my best to make them more regular, but um, I can only do my best, I'm afraid, with the time that I've that I've got. Um, I did end up taking a week off work so that I could get all this done, and it took me three days. No, it took me yeah, no, it took me like three or four days just to do the rebrand. So. Even though I took a week off work, I didn't get as far with it as I wanted to. It was also my birthday, so I was doing other things as well. But um, yeah, I was a bit <laughs> like I wanted to kind of progress a little bit more quickly than it did. But um, I'm really happy with how the rebrand's gone and I'm really pleased with uh, the reception that it's had on Twitter. And I just really hope that this year is going to carry on being as good as it has started so happy new year everybody i really hope that you enjoyed this speed build and i'm really glad to be back doing regular content and i hope that you do stay with the channel and that you enjoy the things that i'm going to be putting out um feedback down below as always and i will see you on the next one
Hey folks, thank you for watching the video today. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And in between videos, you can find me on Twitter at MGYT. Thank you for watching today and I will see you on the next one.